Hey guys, it's Ross going on the Space Couch today. I've got an update on the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser for you. Now, as we know, the Dream Chaser was the one craft that didn't go through to the next stage of the NASA commercial crew program. The Boeing CST-100 and the SpaceX Dragon V2 were the ones that did go through. Uh, since then, there's been several interesting developments about this um, little space plane. Originally, it was known as the HL-20 when the concept first came about, and it was originally designed to be a lifeboat for the International Space Station. That got cancelled, and Sierra Nevada have taken up the work. So anyway, uh, well, it got cancelled, the HL-20, and now the Dream Chaser has not been chosen for the commercial crew, but there are still lots of op options open for it. Um, they've held talk, Sierra Nevada Corp, with uh, Paul Allen of Microsoft and his Strata Launch company, uh, using their giant carrier ship as launch platform. I think I mentioned previously, that would mean it would have to get scaled down in size, the craft, to about 75% of what it currently is. Um, be able to carry three astronauts and or cargo to the ISS or another orbital outpost. Um, I've mentioned in the past that JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, were interested in the Dream Chaser as a possible launch vehicle for uh, their astronauts, perhaps to their own Japanese station, some type of big low habitat most likely, or ferrying them to the ISS when there are Japanese astronauts there. The European Space Agency, ESA, has also shown a great deal of interest in it. There was the DC4EU uh, campaign uh, programme that was very successful recently where they were checking out its capabilities, what it could offer to the Europeans in terms of payload for cargo and for passengers. Um, and where it could be launched from. It could probably be launched from uh, the Kourou spaceport in French Guyana rather than having to be launched from the United States. Anyway, there's a new version now of the Dream Chaser, and this is specifically for cargo flights and the next round of the cargo contract um, to ferry stuff up to the International Space Station. Currently it's Orbital ATK and SpaceX are doing the pure cargo runs. Um, the main difference between this version, the original version, and the three-quarter size version is it's got folding wingtips all of the window ports are filled in, so it's got no windows. And instead of it being launched on top of the rocket, which was the original plan, where it would sit on top of the stack, like, say, the SpaceX Dragon capsule sits on top of the Falcon 9, this would actually, because of the folding wingtips, be able to be enclosed in a um, the standard fairing that they put around the satellites um, while they're launching them through the atmosphere. Um, so that would mean it could be launched on multiple rockets, the Delta IV, the Atlas V, the Falcon 9, possibly some of the, the Ariane, um, or some of the Russian rockets, the Japanese ones also. Um, it would be a fully autonomous craft, like the other cargo capsules, and as well as um, cargo in the fuselage of the Dream Chaser, there would be a cargo module attached to the back, like the um, the other cargo capsules have that unpressurised trunk attached to them, I'm thinking particularly of the SpaceX Dragon there. And instead, and this is what one of the supposed main advantages of the Dream Chaser was, instead of, say, a water uh, landing on water with parachutes, it can just come into land any standard runway. And because it doesn't have those really nasty hypergolic fuels on board, it doesn't have to go into a state of lockdown for a while before it can be unloaded. You can just go up to it and unload your cargo and ship it off to wherever, load your cargo one that's going up and launch it again. So it's definitely one of the more interesting space planes or spacecraft under construction is the Dream Chaser. Certainly one of my favourites. I would love for it to have a role beyond NASA. You know, there could be multiple roles for the Dream Chaser in the future. Both that original piloted version that, say, Jax and ESA want, the three-quarter size version that Strata Launch guys are interested in, and now a cargo version for NASA. Very interesting, very interesting. 
also just on this new uh, commercial, uh, sorry, the commercial resupply for cargo that's upcoming, Lockheed has decided it wants to get in on some of the action, and they're competing for this second round contract. Their proposed vehicle, the Jupiter, it's known as, is kind of like the ATK Antares, as the orbital Antares craft, or the European ATV. You know, it's uh, not reusable. It launches up, you fill it full of trash and it burns up in the atmosphere. can only take cargo up to the space station, can't bring anything back down. However, this Lockheed proposed craft, oh, it sounds like a boondoggle. It's going to have, you know that Canada arm that they've got on the space station that brings the craft in, can place things the, around the space station? Well, it's going to have one of those attached to it. So it's going to shuttle up from the surface, um, then ditch the trunk full of garbage, and it's going to shuttle back to where the next one has launched, use its Canada arm to collect it, and then take that to the space station, and rearrange the modules of its own spacecraft, apparently. I don't know, it, and if, is that going to get burnt up every single time? I don't know, it's very, uh, it's very wasteful. Some piece of technology like that, you don't just be throwing them away every time, it's, it's bad as the rockets. But it does sound like a government contractor's dream come true. That, oh yeah, pay us this, and we'll build this. But, oh, it's actually going to cost a lot more, so you might as well just give us that money anyway. You know, those cost plus contracts that they love so much. Because you know they're not going to build any hardware until they get funding. It's just going to be nice little CGI animations and maybe some wooden and plastic mock-up, like the CST-100, which is only now being built. It's supposed to have a first launch in 2018, if it wins the contract. Want to bet it won't meet that date? I mean, three years, that doesn't sound like a very long time for a giant behemoth like Lockheed to be able to do something as nimble as quickly building a cargo craft, especially with all the stuff that they're putting onto it. I mean, I don't see it happening. Um, but no doubt, given it's Lockheed and Lockheed has its supporters in Congress, they will demand it gets built so they can hand over fist piles of money. It's Heaven forbid those government contractors shouldn't get a ton of cash for nothing. Anyway, guys, that was just the latest news on the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser, which I hope you enjoyed. As always, and please feel free to subscribe to my channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, or leave me a comment or a suggestion for an upcoming episode below.